But let's return now to a story we covered yesterday, and boy, uh, quite a lot of comments and uh, views of my interview with Stephen Wainwright, the head of the CEO of Creative New Zealand, which has decided after many years to withdraw or stop funding in part, and it's only a $30,000 payment, um, funding a um, New Zealand Shakespeare Globe Centre uh, initiative with secondary school children. Um, they did so because it would appear that Creative New Zealand has been infected by critical race theory. Um, and it had an internal document that said that Shakespeare's works were a canon of imperialism, despite the fact that um, Shakespeare lived in the 1500s before the British Empire had really taken off or got going and while colonialism was still just the wet dream of monarch, Tudor monarchs. Um, and, of course, completely disregarded the massive influence not just in England or in the English culture that Shakespeare has had on dramatic arts um, across language barriers, across generations, across time. Um, but Stephen Wainwright says, oh, it's going to, you know, that money's going to a Maori arts festival in Gisborne or Tarawhiti or whatever he called it. Um, and we we're all meant to be good with that. At least he fronted. I'll give him that. But what we did here and I went back and listened to it, was basically that critical race theory, the idea that everything is about race and you're either a, um, you know, the ancestor of a terrible racist or oppressor or you're the ancestor of someone who's been oppressed. It seems to me that that idea has taken hold in creative New Zealand. But the also one other wonderful thing I think about this story is the outpouring of interest from all sorts of people, not just English people, the outpouring of interest and support for the canon of William Shakespeare, of the Bard, and the influence that his works have had, not just on art, not just on dramatic arts, but on the very way we speak and communicate with each other, the very ideas and how we spread our ideas and share them with other people. So it's been quite a thing, and I thought it'd be good this morning um, to talk to the people who kind of are at the centre of the controversy through no fault of their own, the New Zealand Shakespeare Globe Centre, um, who run this programme, and their creator, their CEO is Dawn Sanders. She joins us now. Dawn, lovely to have you on the platform. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sean. Look, I first just want to clarify, for those who don't know, and from the horse's mouth, Exactly what would this $30,000 have been spent on? What is the project it would have gone to? Describe it to us. The project was the XTCNZ University of Otago Philoin Shakespeare Festivals, one of the most uh, Shakespeare festivals. We have 24 around the country and regions right across the, the whole motu. And then we have a national festival with a five-minute scene and a 15-minute one from each chosen by the local assessors to come to our national festival where we have workshops, 20 different ones of all sorts of different aspects to learning all sorts of other skills as you were mentioning and then a group go to a 48 go to a week long intensive half of whom go to the Globe in London so this funding was going towards regional and national festivals which actually in themselves cost about 300000 so uh, it wasn't huge and yet it's obviously a, a large dollop and so that was it, it and it also helps with what we have in our newly revised mission and objectives to transform lives by mentoring potential through experiencing Shakespeare whether it be by performance osmosis, learning the language as you said and those other skills that they gain Okay, do you have any criteria which judge people on their ethnicity, the colour of their skin or their cultural background? Absolutely as far as participants go. Absolutely not. We have total inclusivity. That's, that's the most important thing. We don't judge anything by or anyone by their colour. And in fact, it's extraordinary how... Our, audience, our participants look like the United Nations when you read through the names and look through them. And that is a joy and a wonderful quality that they bring to all the different performances that they do or jobs and roles that they take. And are you looking, uh, and do judges or those who assess these performances, are they looking for 
a traditional interpretation of Shakespeare or is it really that the play's the thing and interpretation is open to those taking part? Absolutely the latter. They have no judgment of to whether or not it is any type of culture, but we absolutely relish anyone who wants to do it in their own ethnicity. And there are a lot of Māori Pacific Island, Asian, Indian, all sorts of different ethnicities get shown. And we don't judge them on anything that will have quotas of, of selections and yet Good on about you. 25% of going to the globe often have Māori or other Pacific yeah. Island ethnicities as well as others. Yeah. Dawn, how long have you been involved with this? I founded the organisation in 1991, and so this is our 31st festival this year. And yeah. I have to say that last night there was a most moving post written by uh, an opera singer called Philip Rhodes, and he was writing about when, in, in the early 90s, about 94, I think it was, he was awarded the prestigious Sheila Wynn Award, and he came from a very insecure background, and he describes it very movingly if you want to look at that online. Mr and Rhodes is, is a that, rather noted um, uh, opera singer too. Absolutely. He's not top liver. Career. Yeah, and he, he credited this as giving him so many experiences. And, and every year from Kurunui College in Waikato, when Ethan McLennan brings over a busload of young people, some it should be volunteers. We have about 2,300 volunteers nationwide, which is vital because, A, we need them, but also it's giving them that culture that nothing happens without other people's involvement. Yeah. And we talk about the pukenga, the development and the development of life skills, and manaki, the opportunity for personal and professional development. And so we have people now who've gone on to be youth workers, Māori youth workers in, in New Plymouth and Dunedin, all over the, the country. So it's all of those other qualities that we want to develop as well, and that sense of whānau, of course. Yeah, yeah, or family, as some would say. Dawn, yes, you are obviously a Shakespeare nut, <laughs> and a huge yes, fan. Yes. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you what it is uh, about Shakespeare that you think is so, so remarkable. I think it is the timelessness and the fact that that playwright has existed right across all time and the fact that all of the stories can be transformed into all sorts of different modes and delivery and mean different things according to what's happening now, whether it be to do with the pandemic or whether it's to do with refugees or whether it's to do with land wars or other things which resonate with the young people. And it gives them that sense of creativity, the mahi ho, of inspiring creativity and innovation. It's, it's, that's a very important quality in these days when we're looking for new ways to do things, do things better and, and more effectively or make them environmentally friendly even and we have people who take it into those realms so I think it is that Shakespeare's words are so beautiful they learn people learn about punning and about alliteration and about other qualities of language that they ha don't necessarily yeah. learn about anymore. Yeah. How do you feel then when an internal document from um, Creative New Zealand describes his work and his body as work as a canon of imperialism? I get very, very angry and upset because it, nothing could be further from the truth. It is just so accessible. And you talk to people from, young people from across the whole socioeconomic spectrum and they relish getting into it. Uh, we have primary playing with Shakespeare, five to 12 year olds, five, five to 13 year olds, and they love it as well. So I, do, I think that the people saying this have not been to the festivals because you just would not say that if you are actually... Are there. you surprised by this, people. though, in this age of political correctness, in this oh. age of critical race theory, where everyone's trying to outwoke everyone else? Are you surprised that Shakespeare has a target on his back? I'm not surprised that I'm upset about it because it's so unfounded. That's often said by people who haven't gone and experienced and seen the benefits. So, and we don't have to accept everything that's happening as being the right way to do things. There's a, there's a yes. balance, isn't there? Did you and, see this coming from Creative New Zealand? Did they put out signals that they were going to they were going to pull the plug? Not in the least little bit. We were, I was flabbergasted. I opened that email and thought, okay, well, I actually asked for 110,000 because I wanted to get a, an EA 
to work alongside me and relieve my workload and eventually succession plan. And mm. um, that, when I saw decline, I was gobsmacked. I just could not believe that. Yeah. Did they provide the thinking <laughs> that this this advice that it was a canon of of imperialism? Did they give you that feedback or not? Yes, yes, we had eleven pages of assessment, much of which was inaccurately written. And I wrote eight pages of corrections to it, wow. and we didn't get we, <laughs> which was just it was total. Do you know who wrote? Who, do you know who the people were responsible? for writing those inaccuracies for um, Creative New Zealand? Well, it would have been Creative New Zealand staff. They have 85 of them, so I don't know which ones. So they were, it they, it was staff, it wasn't independent consultants, it was staff, do you think? Uh, there were two external assessors who... Who were they? Who, I don't know, that oh. gets redacted from the report, but it's a document from under the pen of, or signature of, Stephen Wainwright, and so uh, one assumes that he's... So you off say the buck stop, stops with him, essentially? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and he's the one that hasn't been to any of things. You know what the funny thing, actually, I do it, I just, as an aside, I, I'm talking to yeah. you and I'm thinking, I, I use a turn of phrase, I'm saying, oh, I wonder if that's derivative of Shakespeare, because so much <laughs> in our spoken word is. Absolutely. And I was thinking the buck yeah. stops with you. I bet, well, I bet you we could find a link back to Shakespeare on that. Look, I... I should think so. Um, well, what the Dickens? What the Dickens? Yeah. People think it's Charles Dickens, but it's actually Shakespeare. So, yeah. what the Dickens? <laughs> um, <laughs> look, if, if this has done anything, it has absolutely focused, um, I guess, the culture war, the wars over critical race theory. Um, and I've got the feeling that a whole lot of people are prepared to stand up for Shakespeare. I mean, this has made headlines around the world. Have you had media interest and media from overseas contacting you? Absolutely. Last Friday, at lunchtime last Friday, I had a call from The Guardian in London. And uh, by the end of the day, the, we were front page on The Guardian. And that went global. And it, I've had replies back from people who read that and copies of it, in case I hadn't seen it, from Canada, the States. Norway, from France and Germany, from England, of course, the UK at large, and South Africa, and also Australia, and of course, throughout here, Fiji. And it's also, dare I say it, it's actually appeared in a, in a paper by somebody who's actually not doing things that are very nice at the moment in, in Russia. Oh, <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> hey, Dawn, the other thing, and I, I've had... Um and I was going to ask you this morning for permission to uh, pass your contact details on. I've had a couple of people contact me saying they want to flick you the $30,000. And I'll be honest, there are often wow. tyre kickers and, and scammers involved in tire, things like this, but I will mm. pass them on. Have you had other people come to you and made offers of, of assistance for the program? We have had some, uh, and whether it's a ten dollar donation through our give a li through the give a little, which you can go get to through give a little and, and look up SCC and Z and get to our page, or otherwise slightly bigger ones. But as I say, to get to that hundred and ten thousand, which is still working on a shoestring, uh, we we'll have yeah. to raise over half a million a year. We have an annual turnover of over a million for our programs, yeah. so the thirty thousand is a paltry amount of it, and. Yeah. For, shape, for Creative New Zealand to not fund that amount, especially when you see how much is given to other organisations, ours is always at the bottom of the barrel, yeah. but 30000 is 30000 So, yes, please, do send anybody my way who is willing to help because they're helping. We've had 140,000 students through, and I tell you how many of them keep in touch. It doesn't matter whether they're a top actor, a singer, whether they're working backstage or at WETA, or simply, as I say, being... In other job li lines, mm. they're doing doctors, lawyers, teachers, and journalists, and we have them people yeah. on the front of TV and so on. So, and and working with young ones in yeah. the community. Dawn, if the people who wrote the rejection and said, um, you know, this is a canon of imperialism, if you're sitting in a room with them, what would you say to them? Well, in fact, uh, our our uh, chair, Paul Foster Bell, and I did sit opposite Stephen Wainwright and chair Karen Rangi on Friday as uh, we were invited the opportunity to have a meeting. And from the end of September till then, it was uh, quite a while that um, we had to wait. But we did say that, that it was ridiculous to even equate it with that because 
as was said, the empire didn't even exist then. And it's a canon of brilliantly crafted words and ways of describing things. And mm. it's a bit like going to an opera in a different language or a ballet. Yeah. Well, I said that. yesterday, who cares what nationality Picasso is or Beethoven exactly. is? And that's yeah. the transcendence of Shakespeare, yeah. to my mind. And I, I don't think anyone, or well, anyone with half a brain... Um, uh, would deny that. What was their response to you, to your response? Uh, very sullen, I think, would be the way to say it. There, there was a body language that said, um, right, well, we'll hear you out, but not really hear you. And they did begin by saying, you know, you're not going to change our minds. Wow. And so we, Paul and I just sat there and I quietly went through the document of eight pages of the corrections. And at the end, I must say that Karen Rangi did say to me, can we have that uh, uh, digitally? So I uh, did send it through, but uh, we haven't heard anything. I'd love before. to see that too, Dawn. I'll get Ben to get on with that. I'd, I'd just like to go through and see how much, how misrepresentative they were. Oh, Dawn, can I'm I thank you for your time this morning? And more than that, thank you for all your work over such a long period of time, bringing the fantastic work of Shakespeare uh, to so many uh, young New Zealanders and being part of our cultural landscape. I think it's really, really important. I think it's very, very sad that this tiny amount of money is now denied you. But I do Thank have a strange you. feeling, Dawn, that um, uh, actually uh, your project is going to do rather well <laughs> this controversy. I think so. And I must say, I'd just like to add too that we have 24 amazing regional reps in all our 24 yeah. areas, are all teachers and, and uh, ex-teachers, and um, they oversee a lot of what happens. And the teachers out there, a, a big, huge credit yeah. to them because they follow it through. And But th having said that, 78% of the scenes are student directed. So huge, huge ups to all of those involved. Yeah. Now, I just want to check that. Give a little page. SCC New Zealand? SCG SGCNZ. No, SGCNZ. So okay, yes. and that's on yeah. Give a Little. Yes, it is. Good on you, Dawn. Uh, and I will pass on your details um, to anyone else who contacts me wanting to give you money. I really appreciate that, Sean. Thank you so, so much. All right, take it easy. That is uh, Dawn Thank Sanders. You. She's the CEO of SGCNZ, Shakespeare Globe. Uh, New Zealand, um, the people are uh, apparently evil imperialists, evil colonial and post-colonial imperialist rubbish. Load of absolute todge, in my humble opinion.